Hello everybody, welcome back. Um, today is going to be something a little different. I am going to try <clears throat> coloring threads with acrylic ink. So it's a acrylic paint ink. This is what I bought. Um, I also have some acrylic paints here as well. And I'm going to do a little bit of experimenting. Um, I'm not one to typically experiment because I'm very frugal and I don't have a lot of money to spend on things that might not work. Sorry for the noise. I just wanted to get these little paint trays out. <clears throat> and I apologize for the frog in my throat. I will be clearing my throat. It's allergy season here in Virginia. Yay, not. So um, I'm going to use my mat. Now, um, what I'm going to do is wind some yarn, uh, some thread. <laughs> this is size 8, and it's just the DMC white size 8. Um, now, yes, I think I'm going to wind it this way. Now, you can wind your yarn, your thread. See, I'm used to dyeing yarn. So I will probably be referring to this as yarn for from here on out, but it's thread. Um, I am going to do, this ball of thread is going to go flying everywhere. So I'm just doing a few strands at a time. And that's partially because I am frugal and partially because it's an experiment. And what I'm going to do is I am not going to twist my threads. Now, I don't, I don't know how well you can see what I'm doing. <clears throat> you can see, okay. Uh, so what I'm going to do is cut off some more of this and I'm going to tie this at the top instead of twisting my yarn I see I did it again instead of twisting my thread I am oh my goodness gracious I am just going to tie loosely but firmly but loosely I don't want to knot and I'm going to put a little bow in it so I can pull it out when I'm done. Now, I did fail to bring any water in here with me, so I'm going to stop the camera at some point and go get some water because I have to rinse brushes and so forth and wet my thread down. So I am going to have to go do that. So this. This will probably be a little bit piecemeal, um, but we'll see how it goes. Okay, I want one more over here because I have a loose end over here. And I'm making these threads long because I can always use them in something, you know. So I don't want to um, just use little teeny pieces that they're going to get ink on them more than likely. And I could use them in something even if they go in my ort jar and I use them for something when I make something out of my orts. And if you don't know what an ort jar is, it's all about keeping bits of thread and doing something fun with them. Okay, I'm going to wind a few more of these and you can see this is not behaving. Um, there are better ways of doing this. You can get a nitty knotty, you can make a nitty knotty. And if you don't know what that is, um, it's N-I-D-D-Y, N-O-D-D-Y. <laughs> and you can make them out of plastic or whatever. Um, I'll be back. Okay, I'm back. I know this is a little far away, but that's because I'm trying to get everything in. All right, I went and got some more supplies. Um, now, the first one I did lengthwise on this cutting mat, and this is an 18 by 12. Um, this one I'm going to do... And I realized that I should have done this on the first one. I left an extra long string here at the top and an extra long string here at the bottom. And what I'm going to do now, make sure I'm in 
on camera. I'm going to bring this string under here and I'm going to just tie this around like that and I'm going to bring the bottom string and well that didn't work well did it <laughs> there pull it tight and I'm going to bring this string um, under here make sure it's pulled tight and tie this as well and I'm not going to manhandle these threads too much, I hope. So I'm hoping that these hold. Um, there's different ways to tie off your thread. So there you go. You can do it that way as well. Um, so there's another strand, a uh, set of strands. Now, I went and purchased this the other day, this kind of frame. You could also wrap it around this kind of frame and do the same thing. In fact, you could probably... I don't know if that shows better. You could probably wrap it right around here. And if you don't mind getting ink on your frame, um, you could do this and you could literally paint it right on there after tying it off. So I'm going to do these three to begin with. And I left a bit extra up there. I'm not going to paint it on this because this is a brand new frame. But if you have an old one laying around and you're not using it for anything, you could do this as well. I don't know how this is going to come off here. It might get caught on the edges. We'll see. <laughs> That's what experimenting is all about. Did I catch all of those threads in there? I think so. Let's see if I can keep calling it thread and not yarn. I used to um, hand dye wool yarn a lot. I did wool yarn, wool roving, um, and watching Tori over at Cool Kooky Creatures and Susie and Christine. And who else has done it? Anybody who's been painting thread lately, I've been inspired by them all. So there's my little eight inch ish. That's an eight inch frame. This one is the 12 and, okay, let go. <laughs> and this one is the 18 and they're all tied off. I'm going to set the white thread aside and I am going to, I'm gonna lay down a paper towel and I'm going to wet these thoroughly. Only because I want to see how they come out this way. I should have left one out because I sort of wanted to experiment with them if they weren't pre-wet. Okay. These are these are very wet. And that will be reused, trust me. Okay. I have to separate them again. I didn't say this was going to be good. This is by no means a tutorial, but my experiment is to see, um, I read a blog by someone, which I can't find now, but I read a blog by someone who said these acrylic inks, not paint, it is paint, I guess, but it's acrylic ink, that these are, once they're dried, they are, um, waterproof. So what I'm going to do first, you can barely see. Let me zoom, let me zoom you. Okay, we're going to try that. Um, I wish I had something to put under here that was not, I don't, I'm going to try this. Everything is distracting. Actually, let me see if I can find I'm going to find a darker cloth to set underneath here so I'll you tell can you, see better. I'll tell you, this filming business, it's complicated. I tried a neutral background. That didn't work. The lace was too busy. Um, the cutting mat was too busy. And I have this gray, neutral gray 
darker gray under my um, lace and it worked. It seems to be working. I also am trying to cut the glare, but I need the light because, um, you know, <laughs> otherwise you won't see what I'm doing there either. So, um, all right, we'll go with that. I'm sorry about the glare. I'm sorry about everything. Okay. <laughs> I, can't, I can't, I just, I can't fix everything. Okay. And I'm going to start with the ink first, not like plain acrylic paint. And Oh, shoot. I didn't get myself a little bowl of water, so I'll just have to hope this works. All right. We'll see. <laughs> it could be interesting. Isn't everything I do so interesting? Okay. I'm just wetting that down. Now, the first one, I think I'll go with the 12-inch first. And I may even, no, I'm going to leave it like that. Okay, I feel like this is very hard for you to see. I don't know, we'll, we'll go with it. I'm trying here. I can't do this this afternoon when more natural light is in here because we have to go out this afternoon. So I am just going to do a few drops of this in here because this dropper does not work well at all. It's not picking anything up. Come on. Why are you not picking anything up? Seriously. <laughs> now the little the little thing you squeeze at the top has collapsed and it won't won't suck any ink or air in. Must be clogged somehow. All right. We'll do that. Shaking very well. I hope this finds everybody doing well and uh, working on something fun. I don't know if you're interested in this or not. Please let me know below. Um, but I thought now these these inks I got from Michaels. They are Ar Artist Loft. Wow. These droppers don't work worth a darn. <laughs> Let me clue you in. And I don't know if this is going to be enough or I'm going to have to really. I want saturated colors. Now I have um, used Rit dyes in the past. And um, they do not give saturated. Oh, look at that dropper. Yeah, look at that. See, that's how the other two were supposed to work. However, that is not how they work. And I am not going to put, I have some GAC 900, which makes thing fabric that you paint, um, it's a painting, a heat set fabric painting medium. Right there. Hopefully you can read that. Yeah, I wish I could improve the lighting situation. And I do apologize again, which doesn't do me any good, I'm sure. All right, I'll do a little more red because I think I think I'm going to need more than that. I did cover my desk in a sheet of plastic that we had downstairs. We've used it for marbling and dyeing and all kinds of things. Okay, I did wet my brush beforehand as well. Whoa, look at that. This is definitely soaking through everything. That's a lot.
That is intense color. That's what I wanted. Okay. I'm going to get a separate brush. I brought, where did I put them? There they are. I brought up several brushes so I could um, switch colors easily. Now I'm not going to wet this brush, but I'm gonna get all the fuzz and other stuff off of it. I'm not going to wet this brush. I'm gonna see how this color takes on this now. Whoops. And being on plastic, of course, the color is getting on the plastic. So if you, oh, oh. So if you move that around, your colors are going to get blended and I don't want mud. And what I'm going to do is be wiping up the excess, but I think I'm going to use fabric to wipe up the excess. I'm going to put just a little bit over here and I'm blending those two a little bit. So they're sort of making an orangey. And then I'm going to do the blue, which is very, very intense as well. These are very intense colors. And that's what I'm hoping for in my threads. Now, what I am going to do is I'm going to heat set these by ironing them, but only after they are 100% dry. So these will have to go somewhere <laughs> and dry after we're done here. And then I will be back. I'm not sure if it'll be this video or a separate video. And I will also experiment with washing these. I'm going to use like I use a very mild laundry detergent and, oh, excuse me, and um, here, I'm just going to get this and hold this down with my paintbrush and do this here. Okay, so that one is done. I need to touch up right there with the red. So I'm going to hold the blue over here, go into the red. That looks like I need to touch up a little bit. I'm going to do the ties as well because like I said, I want to get everything on here. And then I'm going to do this red over here as well. I'm just touching up anything that looks like it has absorbed in and might need extra paint on it. This obviously does not need, oopsies, you get back up there, does not need extra paint. And I did blend a little bit here, here. When I touch them, I don't leave white spots. I like my threads to blend into each other. So I think that's good. Um, I should have brought, hold that thought, I'm thinking. We all know what happens when I think. Um, okay, I have some muslin here. I'm just going to lay it on the muslin whoa, beside my door. And this afternoon, it'll the sun will hit it. So what I'm going to do is pick this up here. I want to make sure the threads are thoroughly, thoroughly covered in color because if it soaks in and it gets faded that's not what I'm looking for you want both sides to be covered um, you want it to soak into the thread and these are all lessons that I learned when I was dyeing wool. Okay, I was going to use this to pick this up. And I am going to take this over to my piece of muslin because eventually I would like to do this on fabric as well. So what I am going to do is, what am I going to do with what's on this plastic? I think, I'm going to clean this up. 
So I would spray it just like when I was junk journaling. I would use paper to clean up what was left. I'm going to put a glove on. These gloves are pretty big on me, I think. But, oh, not too bad. Tony bought them to fit him. <laughs> Get out of the way. Oh, look, I'm getting a pretty teal out of it. If I'm not careful, I'll get mud. That's not really what I want. I want to be able to use this fabric because I'm experimenting with thread and fabric, which is just bunches of thread put together. Okay, get that out of the way. Let's spray this one more time. Now, if you wanted to put a cloth underneath this, you could do that as well and just change out your cloth. Otherwise, your colors are going to blend and they are going to become mud. So you do have to be careful as I go spilling my paint palette. Okay, I've got most of that up. I can't get any more with this fabric because the fabric is just getting wet at this point. Get out of the way. Alrighty. Now we're going to move along. Put this over here on my muslin drying sheet. So, if I did not want colors that brilliant, um, I guess I would get white ink and try that. Oh my goodness. I feel like you're not getting any of this as far as light. But when you do get it, you're getting glare. Okay. Um, I'm going to use this sheet to finish cleaning this up because I don't want my colors to run too much. And if you do like to do paper stuff, it'd be really easy to um, pick this up with paper as well. And then you would be able to um, use it as background stuff for your like cards or whatever. Okay, now I'm going to take color and mix it. So I wanna mix red and blue. Don't have really enough red in there. It's very dark purple at this point. So I'm going to try to I'm going to add two drops there. Two drops there. We'll see what we get. Very deep purple. Okay, then I'm going to go over to the yellow. Whoopsies. And I'm going to mix a little bit of blue in with it. Oh, what a pretty teal. That's very pretty. I think I gotta go straight on with that. My thread is almost dried out, but you can see it's not because it's taking it very quickly. And this I have more threads on, so it's a thicker little skein of thread. So I'm making sure I saturate all of the threads because I really like this color. All right, oopsies, I'll leave that there. I'm going to use this purple over here. And of course, you can go buy, you know, different colors. Now, if I put, um, let's see, yellow and blue made green, red and blue made purple, yellow and 
red. Shaky, shaky, shaky. I don't know how long these sat on the shelf before I came along to get them, so. Whoopsies. Make orange. Now these colors are very intense, like I said, so I want that a lot lighter. I don't have any white, I don't have any black, so mixing them is all I have at this point. Woo, that's a bright orange. See, I thought that was gonna come out teal it's very much more green. Sorry, I'm getting lost in my thoughts here. Okay, so I'm going to add more yellow to that one. See what happens. Woo. I think that splotch of um, whatever was holding back that um, dropper came out and it's still very green, but that's okay. I'm experimenting. And I'm making sure I get all the threads. I know this is probably not riveting for you to watch, and I apologize. <laughs> but it's fun for me. I'm going to add a little more blue up here. Just make this a very interesting color scheme. and see what happens. I'm also going to add some more water. Well, that blue took right over. These are very intense colors. And like I said, that's what I was looking for. Okay, I'm going to do more of the purple, but I messed up because I used my, well, I'll just go for it. I'm gonna use that up here. All right, so those two were done with no GAC 900 in it. So I'm going to put that over on my drying place. And now I am going to I got to bring a, a jar in here so I have a rinsing jar. All right. I'm going to wipe this up with my paper towel because these colors are definitely going to become muddy. <laughs> and I'm going a whole different way here. And it's not that I want my plastic to be you know, perfect for the next time. I want clean plastic so that my colors don't get messed up. All right, so this one, I am going to, um, I think, start over again with clean colors. Or 
or mostly clean colors, I hope. Oh, sure would be nice if this would come out the way it's supposed to. There's obviously something wrong with the uh, dropper. Oops, okay. There we go. And yellow, I'm going to have to get a different tray. Nope, there's that thing that was clogging it. So it was clogging the dropper. That's what's happening to the red one too. There's something clogging the dropper. All right. I only need some. I don't need a whole lot. And then I'm going to add my GAC, this stuff, the GAC 900. And it's usually one to one. So I have a lot of paint in there. So I have to double it. And I'll use this on other stuff. Okay. I think that was about right eyeballing it all right oh now what I'm going to do is stir this around with the blue and you know what I'm going to do I'm going to put a piece of fabric under here that's what I'm going to do let me grab one perfect size And I'm going to re-wet it, I think, because it's sort of drying out quickly. Well, look how perfect that is. Ha! Ah! Which is also going to wet the fabric underneath. And we'll see what happens. So this is with the, the stuff that's supposed to make it washable. All right, there's the blue. The red is going to be more of a purplish, but that's okay. No, nope. just a darker red. Red. Now there is another experiment coming up, so don't don't leave yet. I know it's not the most exciting video you've ever seen, but don't don't leave me yet. This might be interesting for you because these paints are easy to get and they are easily, they're not expensive, $7 a bottle. And if you get Michael's coupons, then um, you can get them sometimes 20, 30, 40% off. So buy a couple of, a week if that works for you and have some fun making your own threads. Why not? Right? And these will be very, um, if you wanted... These will change colors quickly if you want a longer bit where it'll um, not change color so fast, where your thread will not change color so fast, then you can do a longer strip of color and let's see what else. Well, do a little red up here. Get that in there. Overlap some. See what happens. Okay. And I'm going to put a little more blue up here. Because I like my blue. There we go. Okay. So I'm going to move these over, but I'm keeping this here. 
Okay, so that's the GAC one. I need to remember that. So I'm putting it, <laughs> I'm putting it on camera so I can go back and check. All right, so um, my next experiment will be with regular acrylic ink and the GAC 900. So I am going to go rinse my brushes and I will be back. I wound a new little mini skein of thread. I almost said yarn again, but I caught myself. I'm wetting it down. Okay. I'm going to get another piece of fabric. Um, sorry, I'm not more prepared. That's the way I roll. Let me snip this and rip it. Come on. I have a bunch of stuff on the floor next to me, so I have to keep going off and getting it. Okay. And see, this already picked up some of that from the plastic, and I didn't want that. But we're going to work with it. Now I'm using these Arteza, Arteza, um, paints. I'm, I'm sorry for the light. I really am apologizing a hundred times for all this. And I'm going to mix in the GAC 900. And I'm going to experiment with um, the, wow, this is a mess, with the um, washability of this as well to see if it really works. Because oftentimes, um, those of us that are doing this will do this and then we'll say, well, this is going to hang on the wall, so it doesn't really matter. I'm not going to wash it. Well, everybody wants to know, is it washable? <laughs> and why not try it, right? So this is a um, Craft Smart acrylic paint, probably Walmart brand, I think. This one's Arteza as well, Arteza, Arteza, Artisan. <laughs> and then the GAC, again, 50-50 mix, I think it is. But because the paint is so thick, I'm adding a little extra, I think. All right, let's see if I can get this mixed. And see what happens. It also um, makes the paint less thick, which is a good thing. So I'm going to paint that down. I'm going to get this one mixed. I think I'm going to need a little more paint. Paint that down. And be thorough. Dab it all the way through, and then do this one. Did I do the same color twice? No, this is much lighter. Go there, and there. And then I'm going back with the, this really pretty, beautiful blue. Make sure I'm getting getting it all the way through because this fabric underneath is going to absorb some of it too. So you really have to um, make sure that you're getting it all. Now I need a little more paint just to get through this. I'm trying not to waste paint. I don't want a lot left over because like I said, I have to go out this afternoon and I don't want it sitting around getting dry. Shake much, Martha. Oops, see, I thought that was the light and I went over it with the dark. That's okay. I'll do some more of the light. Whoopsies. That's not the right color. I mean, right brush. Let's see. 
And I'm also interested in whether this makes the threads um, like thick and hard to handle. Because when I used some of this paint on my um, gel plate, my paint, my fabric came out really weird feeling. But I did not use the GAC on it. All right, what's the last color I need? I think I'm going to use the blue up here at the top. Really saturate it. So. We have a an appointment this afternoon, and we have some an errand or two to run before that, so we will be taking off. And I will let all of this sit on my floor on the muslin that I laid down and let it really dry in the sunshine because the sun comes barreling in this room in the afternoons. It's going to be 72 today, yay. First really beautiful, nice day we've had in a while. Alrighty, so this has the, um, where is, Tony is making hummus, so please excuse the noise. It's okay with me, because we like our hummus. We have to make fresh hummus like every four days or so. What is that color up there? That's the blue as well. I stuck my finger in it so it took some of the color off. And I really want this to turn out. So I'm thinking mixing the GAC in with it is going to definitely make it a more pliable thread. And then I am going to experiment and wash this in a tad bit of laundry detergent. Now I use an unscented, oh shoot. <laughs> Sorry, I have to wiggle you for a minute. I shook the, the GAC bottle and it wasn't closed all the way. Whoopsies. <sighs> I'm usually so careful about that, but it went everywhere. It went all over the camera stand. Who knows where else? Oh, well. C'est la vie. Now, am I laying this on too thick? I don't know. I'm experimenting. That's what we're going to find out. Okay. So that is my G... Oh, gosh, it's everywhere. <laughs> you probably saw that happening as it was happening on camera. Oh, my goodness gracious. Which is why we have a big sheet of plastic down. Okay, I'm going to put this on the fabric over there. I'm going to do some more painting on this fabric because I just think it's fun. And with the acrylic paint and see how it turns out. But I'm going to um, add some more colors. Why not? Right? Okay. I'm shaking. I'm shaking paint. Okay, another tray. Probably need some more brushes. I think I'll throw some pink in there. This is going to be a wild, a very wild. Um, I think I'll just use some of this and that one. Come on, I just need drops. Thank you. And we'll do pink over here where this lilac was because, yuck, because we already have lilac. Ooh, that's an intense pink. And this is, what is this? Ocean Breeze. I do believe this is one of my favorites. Oops. Very teal-like. And, all right, let's add that. That I'm making sure I'm adding plenty of this GAC and it goes, I mean, a little goes a long way, I think. All right, I'm gonna mix this with this brush, we'll see what we get. Oops. 
Let's water this down a little and see what happens. Blue from before is coming off, so I'm basically sort of cleaning my brush with <laughs> this stuff. All right, now this is a very deep dark purple. I don't want to do a lot of it because I like the light colors that this has got going on. Okay. That's all I want of that one. And then I'm going to do this beautiful pink. Can you hear the birds outside singing? They're happy it's spring. It's a nice spring day. It's gonna be 72 degrees Fahrenheit. It's sunny, even more importantly for me, sunshine. Okay, well, I'm not crazy about the way this is coming out, but that's okay. I'm going to spray some more. I'm making this really wet. And... Let's see, let's play around. I'm gonna put this other, this ink on it as well. I really like the way the inks go. I don't know what I'll use this for. Don't ask, no idea. Sometimes you just do things to see how it's going to turn out. All right, so that's that piece, Little thread there. I am going to let you go now, and I will be back when um, all this stuff is dry. Um, it'll be a separate video. It'll be a part two, and washed and experimented with. I will be hand washing these, not doing them in my washing machine, but I will use laundry detergent, and I will heat set them with an iron first, and we'll see how it goes. So everybody take care. Thanks for being here. I appreciate it very much. And you all have a great crafty day. Bye.